What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you guys haven't already, please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops to your drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Uh, I'm doing this video because I thought it would be necessary to put out. And I'm not going to have any live streams Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday is obviously Dead Red Podcast. Most likely a NBA Finals live stream between the Warriors and... And the Celtics, congratulations to the New York Rangers, uh, my favorite hockey team, even though I'm a casual. They have made it to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, through the rest of the week, we'll probably have content as well. I'm really trying to say at least one video or live stream a day because I know there was like a couple of weeks where I just was not on YouTube other than Boys in the Big Apple. But uh, we've had a lot of fun the past few weeks on Boys in the Big Apple with Justin and Brian and a lot of other stuff. So ch check it out. It's a fun podcast, and it's really where we sit back, talk sports, and we go out of topic sometimes because, you know, that's just the way we do things, run censored. Anyway, in this video, I want to talk about two players on the New York Yankees that are really wrecking havoc, and I don't mean that as a compliment. I mean that as... Uh, negative connotation and that's Aaron Hicks and Joey Gallo you guys know how I feel about Joey Gallo um, I never liked the trade and I understand listen you know it's a two out of four split with the Rays and you can't be totally mad but what the fan base will agree with me on is that Aaron Hicks and Joey Gallo are useless ball players and the thing with Joey Gallo is eh, it pisses me off. It really does. Because I talked before about how, you know, Yes Network puts the cam on him when he has his little tantrums. And obviously, we know something's not right there. Um, you know, it's, it's been proven before. He has a little tick. I'm not making fun of it. I'm just stating the real facts. I've known people who have had some type of mental issue. So it's, once again, not anything against them. But when he's in the lineup, he does not hit. Um, he has one double this year. He's not anything worth to this Yankees lineup. And I understand, look, we've had a lot of injuries, a lot of adversity within the last few days. Coming into a week now, I mean, um, Joe Carlos Stanton hit the IL. Josh Donaldson hit the IL. A couple of pitchers hit the IL. So it's not an easy thing for the New York Yankees um, to necessarily replicate those type of players in those certain roles. But Joey Gallo has just been an atrocity. I mean, you look at his average on the season so far, and this is a full, I can't say a full season, but you look at last year, it wasn't a full season with the New York Yankees. It was about half the season. Uh, he hit 160. Right now this season, he's hitting 167, five home runs, seven RBIs, 20 hits, and 128 uh, at-bats. He's hitting 095 in the last seven games and 21 at-bats. He has two hits, two walks, and 10 strikeouts. And, you know, a lot of people said to me last year, oh, well, you know, he walks a lot. He gets on base. This and, you know, the other thing, oh, he hits home runs and all this uh, stuff. It's not made an impact positively on the Yankees' offense. It has not. You know, if runners were in, listen, there are times where the Yankees do struggle with runners in scoring position. But Joey Gallo is just not worth anything. He'll strike out looking. He'll strike out swinging. He's just not meant for the Yankees. And it's not just, oh, he doesn't have the tools to be a New York player to handle the market. He just needs to be somewhere else where the pressure is not as much. And he can do his thing, maybe for a rebuilding team or maybe for a contender that's in a smaller market. But when the New York media focuses in on you and you don't perform in the time that you're given, they're going to shit on you. They're going to talk bad about you. They're going to write stupid articles about you. They're going to write articles that make sense. I know I went on rambling there, but the thing is, Joey Gallo should have never been a New York Yankee. I honestly, you know, once again, you can check my videos. Going back to last year, I did not, and I repeat, I did not want Joey Gallo on the Yankees. And I'm not trying to come out in this video and say, oh, I was right, I was right this thing. I don't want to ever come out in a video and talk about my team negatively and then say I was right because that's bullshit. I don't really make content just to say I was right. I make content to react to my team and talk good about my team and also you know, implementing the flaws and stuff like that in a video. So, you know, Gallo, even defensively, he's not very good. I'm not trying to say, you know, he's not, 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 I don't think not very good was a very good term to put it in. I know I used that word good in, you know, the last few sentences. But he was a gold glover with Texas. 
he's not a gold glover here. He's made a couple of nice plays, but sometimes he will gaff. Sometimes, you know, down the line, he's, he's tracking the ball and drops out of his glove, like in the Orioles game. Uh, there was a couple of weeks ago, even go back to opening series, where he just gaffed on a fly ball. There was a couple other errors. And also, it's not just physical, it's mental. How many times am I going to mention that? So, Joey, listen, I, I know the Italian Yankee fans love you, but he, I've said it for a long time now. I don't think they should have even carried into 2022 with this experiment. He's not really fit to be a New York Yankee. No matter where his family came from, this, that, and the other thing, he's not fit to be a New York Yankee. Um, the next player I want to talk about is Aaron Hicks. I did not have any positive expectation of Aaron Hicks coming into this season. Last year, he played 48 games, I think it was, and then he went hit the IL with a season-ending injury. And it just doesn't look like he doesn't give a fuck anymore. Like, Joey Gallo, you could say sometimes it's the mental thing. I don't know. Aaron Hicks doesn't give a fuck anymore. And, you know, we, we talked about how many years ago the the player Hicks was, the home runs and the on-base and the steals and stuff like that. He came into the year saying he was a 30-30 player. That's not the player he is. And, you know, at this stage of his career, it just looks like he doesn't give a shit anymore. And I'll back that up with stats since a lot of people would beg for that. Aaron Hicks on the season is hitting 200, a home run, 7 RBIs, 5 stolen bases, 24 hits, and 120 AB. So actually, uh, the same amount of ABs that Joey Gallo's getting. And then you look at his last 7 games, 217, 6 strikeouts, 2 walks, 5 hits, 2 runs in 23 at-bats. The last 15 games, he's hitting 152. In the last 30 games, he's hitting 154. So... And you can say, oh, well, he hits singles, he walks. You know, it's funny, there's a lot of people who ripped certain fans like myself for talking bad about Aaron Hicks, and now that he's gotten completely worse at baseball, you know, people have just went back on their word. They've walked it back a little bit and say, okay, you know, we don't need Florial. He's not a sure answer. Let's go out the trade deadline and get Andrew Benatendi, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. Um, but with, with that being said, Hicks is just not a valuable ball player. And the thing is, though, as well, besides the agingness and the defense is not very good as well. You know, the arm strength is not there. That's why a lot of people, including myself, have actually turned against their original word and said, listen, Judge is a center fielder. He might actually be uh, a good fielder in, in center field at Yankee Stadium and keep him there. But Aaron Hicks, and I'm addressing the elephant in the room, he is not any good with runners in scoring position i don't know his average uh yahoo probably has the splits but it's so bad strikes out um there was uh, tampa bay a couple of days ago right i think they were losing and they needed runs severely severely i think it was on sunday actually first and second isaiah kiner falefa i believe was next line out to third this guy has not made the adjustments he doesn't care and his stats show it, the eye test shows it. And maybe the advanced analytics will show it. I don't care about the advanced analytics, at least in baseball. In football, I do. And here's where I have to fault the Yankees. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, the Yankees are a first-place team. Why are you ripping them? Aaron Boone has to be a manager in some sort of these situations. You have a tough series coming up. I don't want to hear it from anyone else. You have a tough series coming up against the second place Los Angeles Angels. And for some reason, they're actually performing this year. We ripped them because they're the bottom of the payroll, this, that, and the other thing. They signed Syndergaard. Otani's doing great. I believe Mike Trout's still healthy. So it's a tough series, whether it's pitching, hitting, whatever. They're a good ball team. Really weird way I just put it. But anyway, they're a good ball club. Um, Honestly, I thought they should have taken three out of four. And the offense barely scored runs in that series. Um, I thought they should have taken three out of four from the Tampa Bay Rays. And there was two situations, two situations where Aaron Hicks was up with runners in scoring position. And the first time he did something, whatever he lined out, he popped out, did whatever useless. Aaron Boone has to be a manager and can't just sit here and micromanage at times, which is really why I get pissed at Boone sometimes. And listen, I've come around with him. He's gotten better as a manager this year, and I think that was because the pressure was put on him. Basically, 80% of the fan base didn't want him back. Um, I know a lot of people are saying Cashman, whatever, that's off-season talk. That's not right-now talk. But in these situations, in these games, you would rather prefer 
And, and this is not even Aaron Hicks from the left side. I'm talking about Aaron Hicks from the right side. So he's facing a lefty. You could put in Trevino to pinch hit. You could put in Marwin to pinch hit. There's a couple of guys on your bench you could put in to pinch hit against a lefty. In any situation, really, just to broaden the horizons here. But Aaron Boone didn't do that. And that's honestly why you could say the game got away from the Yankees in game number four. I think it was a 4-2 game in total because Judge hit that homer. Glaber hit the home run earlier. So, you know, you could talk about bullpen. You could talk about this, that, and the other thing. But at the end of the day, Aaron Hicks and Joey Gallo are not making the adjustments. And they shouldn't be in the starting lineup. I understand, you know, the resources and we have to wait till the trade deadline. But at least try to make up of what you have. Esteban Florio is in the minor leagues right now. Maybe give him a shot. There's a couple other guys that are, you know, probably playing the outfield in the minor leagues or whatever. Maybe Andujar could get some reps in left field. He's He's been decent in left field. He's been better than Aaron Hicks and Joey Gallo in left field. Maybe he hasn't made the impact plays, but he's made the simple ones. He's gotten better with his route running. I know that seems like a football term, but trust me, if you play the, big ga- uh, play the game of baseball, if you watch a game of baseball, route running is actually a thing, getting under the ball, all that sort of stuff. Um, but Aaron Boone, I believe, has to be a little bit more of a manager. And who gives a shit about Gallo's feelings? I understand that, once again, there's a mental thing with him. But at the end of the day, best for the team, not the player itself. Aaron Hicks, he doesn't care about baseball? Sit him down. Who cares? That was an abomination of a contract. We all know it. I'm not going to discuss it for the 30th time. But um, he needs to sit. He needs to sit. They need to DFA him. They need to do something. Get rid of him. Get rid of him for scrap. Same thing with Joey Gallo. I actually think, in my honest opinion, you might get something more for Joey Gallo than you will Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks might be, you know, if they trade him at all, I think it's going to be a contract dump. But Joey Gallo, if people look at the upside and, you know, certain teams, like maybe he goes to Cincy, or he goes to this team or that team, maybe an up-and-coming contender that's almost in it, maybe the White Sox, or I don't know. They might think, hey, listen, we're not as big as a market as New York. We have a good offense. If Gallo can just walk, hit homers, and do what he does best, he will be a fifth or team. So that's why I think that Joey Gallo might actually be more trade value sense-wise than Aaron Hicks. Um but two players I have outlined for the New York Yankees to go out and get at the trade deadline. Well, really, uh, I think two I put. Maybe three. Um, so I'm going to highlight those now. Yep, I have three down right now. And the first one I'll go over is Ian Happ. Now, something you'll see with these outfielders, they're not power hitters. Uh, they have the potential for power, mostly contact. Ian Happ, Andrew Benintendi, and Tommy Pham. I understand, yes, Tommy Pham got suspended over punching somebody over the IR rule in fantasy football. Stupid. i have not even going to talk about that. Anyway, Ian Happ, he's with the Chicago Cubs, really hasn't done well in his last seven games. Batting 154, two home runs, eight RBIs, nine strikeouts, one stolen base, four hits, and 26 at-bats. Um, this total season though, he's hitting 255, so that's still above the Mendoza line, five home runs, 26 RBIs, three stolen bases, 149 ABs, 38 hits, 25 runs. If you want to look at OPS, 0.774, 365 on base percentage. Um, you look, you look at a guy like Andrew Benintendi, who probably is the best candidate on this list. He's had, you know, only two home runs this season, but he's got 324 batting average, 394 OBP, and his OPS is higher, 812. 170 at bats, 55 hits. In his last seven games, he is hitting 292. Four strikeouts, five walks, more walks than strikeouts. I love that. Uh, one RBI, seven hits in 24 ABs, three runs. And then you take a look at Tommy Pham from the Reds. 233 on the season, not very good. Uh, 335 on base, 708 OPS. 158 ba- uh, 150 ABs, five home runs, 17 RBIs, 35 hits. Obviously, I mentioned the at-bats already in 26 runs. Um, I'll talk about bullpen in another video because that actually might be a concern coming up whether the Yankees decide to go out and get an arm, whether they get guys back from the IL, or maybe if they just stick with the guys and say, look, Matt Blake can really get the struggle out of these guys. Maybe Michael King will eventually go back on you know, his ace streak of being reliever. Maybe the wise guy will come back. I don't know what they're going to do, but we'll talk about it in another video. I just wanted to get this out. Um, I know, yes, it's it's a fairly negative video, 
for a winning streak or at least you know a first place team but i felt it was necessary to make make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops your jobs appreciate y'all coming back um boys and big apple every monday 8 10 p.m eastern standard time look forward to the dead red podcast on thursday more content out this week also possibly a warrior celtic stream on thursday and then we will go from there peace out guys see you later stay cool